Okay. <laughs> so, literally after I finished watching how to pronounce the author's name, my Chipotle order came, so... The angle's a little different if I'm not sitting in the exact same spot, that is... that's why. What is up, booktube? It is Monty, and today I'm here to do a haul video. Now, full disclosure, some of these are things that I've already posted about on Instagram, so if you follow me over there, which is always linked, I can't tell if I'm in focus or not. <laughs> um, as you can see, I have a new background. I don't know if I'm going to be filming in front of this background the entire time that I'm here. Who knows what I'm doing? I certainly don't, but if you follow me on Instagram, like I was saying, um, some of these are going to be things that you've seen, some of these are going to be things that you haven't seen, um, some of these are things that I bought, like, July, um, but they weren't included in a haul video that I can remember, um, and some of these are things that I've picked up since I moved, um, I'm not going to get into too much as to what each book is about. I might give a synopsis. I will let you know if I've already read it or not, because a couple of these I have. Um, but I think that's all of the disclaimer -y stuff that I need to say, and uh, let's get on to the video. Now I'm going to start off with the two books that were sent to me from uh, Wednesday, and that is a finished copy of More Than Maybe by Aaron Hahn, which I read. I don't think I made a video review for, but I do have a written review, so I'll leave that also linked in the description. Um, this is a young adult novel set in Michigan following the son of a washed up uh, rock star and a girl who is super into music wants to go into journalism for music. Um, their paths crossing, falling in love, very cute. Um, but when they sent me the finished copy, they also sent me Aaron Hahn's first book, You'd Be Mine, which I think is about a, like, a country pop person. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to reading this one. Okay, so I'm going to go through the hardbacks, and then we'll get into some paperbacks, and that's going to be the general structure of today's video. So to round out the rest of my hardback young adult, I bought Love Boat Taipei by Abigail Hing Nguyen. Um, I've heard that there's some, I don't even know if there's problematic, but there's some interesting things in here that, um, people have issues with. I don't know what those issues are. I don't know what those things are. I just have heard that um, people have some issues with this book, but I'm very much looking forward to it, and um, I will look into that when the time comes. <laughs> and then I also picked up uh, Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon, which is a young adult novel wherein the top two students at a high school have to team up to, like, find some kind of... Uh, it's like a scavenger hunt situation on like their last night of high school and um, them falling in love. I'm very nervous. Time crunch novels are pretty hit or miss with me. I loved They Both Die at the end, even though in retrospect I probably wouldn't give it the same rating, but I hated, I hated with a burning passion this one is also a star. So who knows how I'm going to feel about this one, but I'm looking forward to it. The first of my adult novels was my Patreon pick for the month of August, so a video review of this one will be coming shortly, and that was A Burning by Mega Majumdar. Hopefully the pronunciation came through. I'm not butchering this, this person's name. Like I said, my patrons voted on this one. I read it. I wasn't really blown away by it. It felt very average to me, personally. This just isn't the kind of contemporary that I like. It's not the kind of novel that I am drawn to. I think if I was into this, Maybe I would have enjoyed it more. It definitely is a very insightful look at Indian politics and anti-Islamic sentiments in India. Um, but it just, it didn't click for me. Lovely, one of the perspectives that we get in this novel was definitely my favorite. But um, that's really all I got to say about a bird. It's also really pretty. This is a very beautiful cover. Next, I picked up the Unfriendly Black Hotties book club pick for the month of August, not September, 
uh, and that was Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. I'll leave a link down below in the description to the live show the hotties had discussing this book. I gave this five out of five stars. Um, again, I don't want to get into too much of it just because like I don't know if I'm actually going to do like a sit down video for it. But I found that this book wasn't really what everyone says it is. I don't really even think that it's about performative activism. I feel like it's more about the tokenization of black people. Um, that's what it really felt like. I didn't feel like there was any kind of performing, like there was sure like a performative aspect to it, but I wouldn't call it activism. Like they, they were just performing. It was like they were tokenizing these people. Um, but it was really good, really enjoyed it. Again, this isn't even like about Amira. I felt, I felt this was very much more Alix. And what was his name? Like Kennedy, some weird, I don't know. The, the love interest here was also, I felt kind of front and center and it was more about them than about Amira or what happened in that grocery store, which is fine. Um, so again, I gave it five out of five stars. And again, I really like the cover of this one. Next is a book that I picked up recently and I'm kind of embarrassed that I picked it up, but it kind of, it, it all works because I think that subconsciously I picked it up so I could read it for Aaron over at Booked and Busy's Royal Readathon, which I think is happening the third week of September. I'll leave a link to her video down below or up in the cards. All kinds of links in this one, guys. So hopefully you check all of these things out. Um, there are only like five prompts and this doesn't fulfill multiple prompts, but it definitely fulfills one. And um, it is The Royal We <laughs> by Heather Cox and Jessica Morgan. And I feel like this is uh, William and Kate fan fiction. Um, that was published and um, when I, I had no intentions of reading this book ever in my entire existence on the planet but after I moved I saw this at my local indie bookstore and it was discounted and who am I to deny a hardcover book for seven dollars like and it fits into Aaron's thing so I can be a supportive friend so I had to pick it up so I own it I might read it this month I don't actually know next uh, is a book that I picked up because of Aaron, I went to Books A Million, because it's Aaron's favorite bookstore apparently, um, to get a copy of Jade City by Fonda Lee. Um, they did not have Jade City by Fonda Lee, but they did have Vagabonds by Hao Zheng Fong, translated by Ken Liu. This is a Chinese author, and this is a sort of a space opera set on Mars. Uh, the, the Martians send uh, they're like high rank. I think it's like a, I think they call her a princess. Do they call her a princess? They don't. But they send a delegation of young Martians to Earth. At this point, there's been some kind of like conflict. Earth and Mars are not getting along. Kind of you know standard sci-fi stuff. Um, but when the delegation they send to Earth comes back to Mars, I guess there's some issues. And I'm all here for drama. And that's kind of like my thing. Like I want. I want the drama and I think that Vagabond is going to deliver that but I own Vagabond and I might read it this month. I don't know. It's pretty chunky so we'll see what happens there. Next is uh, All Adults Here by Emma Straub. I just saw the cover and I kind of liked it so I bought it before I moved. It was a very much an impulse buy. Um, I believe this is about like a messy family dynamic and it's kind of the story of a family. It's not too long so I have kind of high hopes, but I've never really read an Emma Straub book, so I don't really know what to expect going into this one. The next two are books that I picked up and I talked about in one of my more recent reading sprints, um, maybe doing a reading vlog of reading them together and kind of talking about my experiences. But when I first heard about one of these books, I knew that I wanted to read it. And then when I saw the second one, I was like, this has to be a vlog. And so the first book that I picked up was Utopia Avenue by David Mitchell. And then my book of the month pick that I got for this month was The Unraveling of Cassidy Holmes by Alyssa R. Sloan. And both of these are about uh, a, a musicians or a group of musicians. And um, I was really hoping that they would give me some Daisy Jones and the Six Vibes. And so I thought that I could read them, talk about them in a vlog and let you know my thoughts on them. So this is written by, I want to say, yes, you, uh, Alyssa Arslan is a Japanese American. And so I think that this will be a fun thing to kind of, because obviously Taylor Jenkins Reid is a white woman and David Mitchell is a white man. And so I've kind of got like the white perspective on pop stardom. Um, I don't think that Cassidy Holmes features like a main 
character who isn't white, but I haven't read it yet, so maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. Um, but I think that this will be a reading vlog coming to you hopefully this month. Um, as we know, we have a lot of things planned already for September, so who knows what will actually get done. The next book is another book that I picked up on my first trip to my new local indie, and that was Startup by DeRay Shafir. That can't be Shafir. Uh, Shafrir? Um, I don't really know. It sounded interesting in the store. I want to say it's about um, a tech startup, and there's kind of a... Uh, some messiness that happens. You know that it's me, okay? So if I've been picking up a contemporary, something about it in the synopsis sounds messy. As always, links to everything uh, will be down below. So if you want to read the Goodreads description, because I didn't summarize it, you can find it down there. Uh, next, we are moving on to the paperbacks that I picked up. And so the first one that I got was Candace Bushnell's One Fifth Avenue, which, as we all know, Candace Bushnell wrote Sex and the City, turned into the TV show. Um, this one just sounded interesting. It takes place, obviously, in New York City at One Fifth Avenue, and it's about the five people who live in this little apartment, you know, complex or whatever. Well, it's not a complex, it's a building, but in the building and um, their lives. And you know, it's gonna be good. Like, it's gonna be fun trash and I'm going to eat it up and I'm very much looking forward to reading this one. Next is Susan Choi's My Education, which I think is going to deal with sexual assault. Um, some kind of weird sex stuff is happening in this book from my understanding of the synopsis along with maybe something darker? I don't know. It gave me some interesting vibes. Again, it's not too short and again, it wasn't that expensive. It was like five dollars. So you can't let me go to the bookstore and then things be five dollars. <laughs> it just it don't it don't work out that way. Next, I pick up the Brother is K by David James Duncan. I believe this is a family saga situation. I'm the, I'm a sucker for a good family saga, so we picked that one up. <laughs> then uh, I don't this one. I'm gonna be very honest with you. I don't know why I bought this book. I really truly don't. I should have put it back, but I didn't, and now I own it. And that is New York by Edward Rutherford. This is one of his like history novels where he deals with like history, but it's like non like it's like fictional, and it's going to be interesting. I'm hoping it's going to be interesting. Um, so I own this one. Uh, the next is the last adult sci-fi that I bought, and that was *The Reality Dysfunction* by Peter F. Hamilton. This is the first book in a series, and this first book is already a thousand pages. So I'm hoping that Aaron is right and that this does slap. This is published by Orbit. I'm not saying that Aaron has read this, but Aaron is always saying that Orbit doesn't miss, so I'm hoping this one doesn't miss. Um, I've heard some good things about this author from other people who read adult sci-fi, so I'm hoping that I enjoyed this first one, because again, it is a thousand pages. And the last two books I'm going to talk about are books that were technically free, because the only good thing that came out of that trip two books a million. Uh, I mean, not that I'm not happy with the books that I bought, but I spent more money on that day than I thought I was going to, um, was I got a little coupon. And so technically I didn't, I guess it's not really a coupon, it's more like a gift card, but it was like a piece of paper, so it felt like a coupon. Um, so these were technically free, technically didn't pay for them, and um, they're both, I would like to say, booktube classics, if you will. So the first one is Save the Date by Morgan Matson which I only picked up because I've never read a Morgan Matson book and um, people used to love her and I'm a contemporary reader so I want to see if this holds up. And then the next one I would say is more of a contemporary um, in terms of time uh, booktube classic and that is Nevermore by Jessica Townsend, uh, The Trials of Morgan Crow. So that's what I got here. Um, I'm hoping that I enjoy this one. People say that it gives them good things. I believe Hollow Pox comes out sometime soon-ish, end of the year time. I don't know the exact date because I'm not in the fandom like that, but this is the first book in that series. So that was my haul. One moment while I grab all the books. So here are most of the things that I purchased. I'm gonna drop these on my bed now. Uh, let me know down in the comment section what was the last book that you bought. Let me know what you're excited to see me read and talk about. And as always, make sure you leave this emoji 
down there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again soon with another video. But until then, and until next time, bye.